Hi, I'm Jared Wojtovich, an automation engineer here with Minuteman Empire Automation Systems. Today, we're going to be doing a basic overview of Zebra Aurora Design Assistant. So what we have set up here is our Zebra Irish GTX. This is a five megapixel camera in the color option, as well as a red bar light. We also have a cube here that has various letters and data matrices on it that we are going to be inspecting. So if I hop right into the software right here, this is what you see when you first open up the design assistant software. Basically, we have a bunch of different templates, tutorials, examples, utilities that are available at your disposal. Now you can go ahead and click on these if you want to um, and learn a little bit more about the various tools um, that you are able to use at your disposal. So if I come over to my new project here, it's basically going to ask me how I want to connect. So that's actually located under the platform here. So I want to connect remotely through my laptop to this assigned IP address. Now the IP address may be different uh, when it comes out of the box, but you wanna assign the IP address here to the IP address of your camera. I should note that I do have the ethernet cable coming from the ethernet port on the camera to the backside of my laptop for the connection here. So I am on the same subnet and this is the IP address that is assigned for our GTX camera. So if I go ahead and click connect, it says that it already is connected, which is great. So if I go to a new project here and I make this example, and we'll call it cube, we can see where we're storing that. We're going to pull from our camera and we have the Iris GTX down below here. So if I click okay, what we should see is the project opening and eventually being created. <clears throat> Once that is loaded up at the top, we can do a couple different things. We can go ahead and trigger our camera by clicking on the camera and the little play button here. You can see this is the initial image that we see. If we go to project and configure platform, this is where we can either set up our system, go in and change some parameters with the system, the camera, image sets if we have any, set up any industrial protocols. So for example, if we wanted to use Ethernet IP, we would enable it. And then we have the ability to enable or disable quick comms, essentially that assigns specific registers for these various uh, fields that are already assigned. And then you would go ahead and add data to those fields as you're setting up your program. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just disable this for now. Additionally, if you had any robots or serial ports, you can go ahead and establish communication with those right from this screen here. So what we have here is a color image, but what I'm actually going to do is change this to a grayscale image. So I'm going to go to my configure platform tab, go to my physical camera, and on the right side here where it says color mode, I'm going to change that to grayscale instead of color. Just makes the purposes of this video a little bit easier and then I'm going to click OK. So if I re-trigger my camera, we should see this red image here change to a grayscale image as we see. To add tools to the bottom of our flowchart or in line with our flowchart, all we have to do is double click on this little down arrow. And again, because this is flowchart based, it's going to work sequentially one tool after the next. So the first thing it's gonna do is acquire an image, and now we want to add in a secondary tool. So here you can see this camera actually has a built-in runtime and design assistant runtime uh, that has a partial license on it. So here we have limited tool sets that we can use. Obviously, depending on which tool sets you need, will determine which license you should purchase. Um, so, you know, here we have um, model finder, pattern matching, edge locator, so on and so forth for locators, various analysis and processing tools, 3D tools, measurement tools, so on and so forth. Classification tools, so we can actually do a little bit of deep learning. Um, calibration, white balance, just various tools that um, allow you to really, really take advantage of that flowchart. Again, we have some flow controls here, um, if statements, loops, uh, conditions, we can go ahead and check those. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to locate that data matrix and then read the actual letter and make sure that it corresponds. So if I go into my readers tab here, you can see that we have the code reader tool. So if I double click on that, it's going to add that in line underneath my camera tool. So I'm going to double click 
And then you can see there, it's actually looking in the whole image. So that initial grayscale image that we took, it's looking at that entire image for a data matrix. Um, you can actually come in and specify what code type you want it to look for out of the various code types that are out there. Obviously, this being a data matrix, we want it to look for that. So we click data matrix, and you can see there it does find the letter M. Let's say we wanted to set up a code grading operation. So what we would do here after our code reader step, we would double click underneath that tool, go back into our readers and double click on the code grade step. Now what that's going to do is essentially link with our code reader step that we just set up. And we can specify what grading standard we actually wanna go off of. So with this being a directly marked part, we want to use the AIM DPM standard and we can see that the resulting grade is set up right there under the overall symbol grade. Now let's say I wanted to go through and view what the actual results of the code reader and the code grade steps were. I can go to my results tab on the bottom, actually under my quick evaluate tab, my apologies. Um, and we can actually select the tool and the specific parameters and outputs from each tool and put them into an output window. So if I go to my code reader stuff, I can actually select the decoded string and that will put that in the right column on my screen here. Double click and you can see that the letter M is added under the value. And now let's say I want to look at the corresponding code grade. What I can actually do is come into my overall symbol grade, double click that, and it adds it right below my overall, um, or my decoded string, my apologies there. So under M, I have a grade as per the AIM DPM standards of A, which is really good. So now all I have to do is come in and press run. And if I watch this, you can see that the values are updating. And if I rotate this, we should find the letter A, A1, there are two A's on this, M-A-S, E-A-S, which stands for Minuteman Empire Automation Systems, tip there. And then if we go to the S, it should find the S once it actually triggers, which it does there. Now, if you want to come in and create a custom HMI that is displayed on a monitor up at the top here, we have operator view layout. So we can actually come in and modify, you know, project title, add logos, and we can come in and really change the global results, um, output any type of data that we want, and also change the image that's displayed in this little HMI or GUI interface here. So that's really it, you know, like I said, if you wanna add loops um, or counters or if statements, we can really come in and leverage the flowchart here. Very simple, very simple to deploy the project as well uh, once you actually have that set up. So this has been a general overview of the Zebra Aurora Design Assistant software. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Zebra related content as well as other technologies that Minuteman Empire Automation Systems supports. Thank you.